John, it's probably about eight years since we last spoke at this spot. I mean, how how has life been, say, in the last eight years? Um, when been, it comes to Robert, yeah, it's been it's been challenging. It has been challenging. Um, around about um, ten years, I had um, a bit of a meltdown, to be honest, and um, uh, I went back to Roots. And I went back to the fire service, and they helped me with some counselling, which I hadn't had. I guess really for me I was just so angry about um, the way we've been treated um, by the Americans and the fact that um, you know no one had ever stood up and apologized to us and we for us it was never ever ever about compensation it was always about just somebody some re responsible person from America standing in front of us and saying we're sorry for what we did you know um, and that would have been um, quite a healing process for all of our family um, me I guess it's because of where I come from, from the fire service. You know, if you make a decision in the fire service and somebody gets hurt, you then just you have to justify that decision. And these pilots um, have been taken straight back to America, even before we got the knock on the door to tell us that our sons have been killed. And they were taken out of the UK, and no one has ever faced any responsibility for it. And that hurt. That really did hurt. So it's been it's been challenging. Um, obviously, in the eight years, I've got a little bit fatter and a lot greyer. Um, but now um, I have my coping mechanisms and um, when I feel a wobble coming on as now as we're approaching uh, Rob's anniversary um, I just I change direction I go and do something else and just deal with it that way really. You know? but not only are we talking about um, difficult times so under the announcement regarding the withdrawal does this mean this is now a difficult time what's your reflections? It is a difficult time um, I've kind of in my mind and in my body I've kind of um, uh, I've put it in a box um, so if I can put things in, in a compartment I can deal with it and how I'm dealing with it is I am not going to get angry and I'm not going to beat myself up about it because um, there's nothing I can do about it and um, we knew it was going to happen at some point um, I have I have loads of photographs um, from Afghanistan back in 2007 where um, Robert would be in a certain e area and it would be a complete desolate village. There would be nobody out on the streets. There would be um, no trade going on or anything. And at the end of the tour, um, that those streets were packed with people. There was markets going on. You could buy food. So um, what all of the British uh, armed forces have done in Afghanistan is they get, they gave a Afghanistan a bit of a structure. Um, but as soon as the troops pulled out, then it was inevitable that the Taliban would um, overrun it again. Um, I do. I work with um, other families of, of fallen soldiers, and some of them are so angry, um, their life has been torn apart by the decision made by the Americans to pull the troops out. Um, I'm not sure it was the right decision. Um, they've left a lot of people in danger over there, as we see um, daily on the news and that wasn't the right thing to do. There was probably a better way of managing it. I don't know how that could have been managed but there must have been a better way to manage it than just to pull the troops out and leave the people to fight for themselves because they can't fight against the Taliban. The Taliban are too strong and they're too deeply rooted in that country. Um, and as you said, you continue to have a role in, in, with regard in veterans. Does that give you a lot of satisfaction? It does, yeah. It, when, um, it's one of my coping mechanisms. When, uh, when I'm having a bit of a wobble and I, then I'm dealing with other families and helping other families, um, it takes away what I'm feeling. It's, that's my change of direction. Um, I, um, I don't live in the UK now, um, I live in Spain, I've been over there now for six weeks and there's a family over there that I met through uh, RTTW which is um, Ride to the Wall which is a motorbike event up at the National Arboretum in Staffordshire and there's always somebody in this world that's worse off than you and I met this couple that um, the dad was really struggling what, what, uh, with what had gone on with his son um, his son took his own life in Afghanistan after um, getting a phone call from his wife to say that she didn't love him and blah 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 and Rob was, he just, he couldn't cope. So I was talking to him for quite a few years before um, uh, I actually moved to Spain. Rob and Mandy, his wife, live in Spain now and it was them that went and viewed our house for us and um, yeah, the rest is history. We, uh, we bought the house on their recommendation. But for me, it's really nice and it's quite comforting that um, I don't have any magic words. I'm just testament to the fact that there is a life after losing a, a son in, uh, in the armed forces. Um, and that's all I've tried to get over to Rob and Rob is coping and dealing with his situation now so that's kind of my comfort that's what I get you know. Is it a great tribute to, to your son and to your family that we have Foster Court, we have the bench, we have the name, his name at the Nets World Cross and you have this event once a year that's a great tribute to, to, to your son isn't it? It's, um, it's uh, I, I can't find the words to explain that um, 
I think I said very, very early after we lost Rob, um, it was within two days, um, I did an interview with the BBC, and one thing I said was, I'll never let my son's memory fade while I have a breath in my body. And now for me, on um, uh, Sunday week, um, when they have, um, they call it Frog's Day, and there'll be 60, 70 people down here, um, and all those lads are now, um, well, and girls as well, are, are married with their own families. So I see their um, sons and daughters come down, that all know who Robbie Frog is, um, so the legacy goes on. Um, I arrived back from Spain on Saturday and come to Harlow to stay with my brother and the first thing I did was went to Foster Court and just went and stood at Foster Court. And also for me as well, when, um, when Foster Court was opened, uh, one of the first people to move into it was um, a fireman from Old Harlow, a retained fireman, and it, it was quite comforting for me to know that there was um, you know, somebody from my old job that's like living in the houses um, this morning, um, I've come out, I'm on my own today, my wife's gone shopping, so before I come down to meet you, I went to the town park and I went and um, had a chat with Robbie, went to see his tree in the town park, come here, had a bit of a tidy up, so yeah, it's just, um, the legacy goes on, and I don't think, if, if, if I popped my clogs and started pushing up daisies tomorrow, I know that this event would still go on, and that for me is very, very comforting, you know. John Foster, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.